Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalren and in today's video I want to bring you guys an Outlaw Rogue PvP guide for the patch 715. It is the brand new patch that came out and hopefully this video is going to be a good PvP guide for you guys to get the very basics of Outlaw PvP and if you want to see more Outlaw Rogue content be sure to subscribe to the channel because we upload regular Rogue content and for the most part we still do main Outlaw. In this video I'm going to cover the changes to Rogues that have happened between patch 7.1 and 715, the talents, the honor talents, the basic playstyle of an Outlaw Rogue, and some useful PvP macros. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's first talk about some of the changes that has happened to Outlaw Rogues in this new patch. First of all, Pistol Shot no longer has a 50% slow. The slow has been changed to 30%, so just do take that into account when you're out in battlegrounds or in arenas. True Bearing no longer lowers the cooldown of your defensives or your blind, so be sure not to waste your CC or your defensives. Run through DPS increased trait for your artifact weapon had a slight nerf as well. Finishers are now not as cheap as they were, very very slight PvE change due to a change in your artifact trait, but for the most part PvPers should not notice this. Also Outlaw Rogues gained a 16% aura added, making many of your spells 16% more effective, whatever that means. This is the first time they added auras in the game and we are supposed to be doing more damage. The best way to notice this damage increase is to check your saber slash damage in PvP, where you should be hitting a little bit harder. Also Rogues gained Shroud of Concealment again as in Mr. Pandaria so now you'll be able to shroud your friendlies whenever you're in battlegrounds or in arenas so feel free to take use of that utility. Now let's talk a little bit about Outlaw Rogue class talents. In the first row we have Swordmaster and Quick Draw as two viable options because of a change to our artifact weapon trait Blunderbuss which has been increased in terms of damage by a ton. Quick Draw is now an available option for you guys so whichever one you choose Swordmaster or Quick Draw doesn't really matter as much. I would recommend though if you are going to be playing Roll the Bones then Quick Draw and Jolly Roger work really really well together as a buff ability talent combo. So if you are going to be playing Roll the Bones instead of Slice and Dice Quick draw is one of the good ones that you can utilize, otherwise Swordmaster should be just fine. In the next trait with our mobility is that Grappling Hook is still the best because it provides us a lot more mobility and still benefits from cooldown reduction and can be used in PvP a lot more often than acrobatic strikes and hit and run thanks to the slows. In the next trait it's a question between Deeper Stratagem and Vigor and the answer to which one is the best is it's really hard to decide. I've seen Outlaw Rogues in the patch 7.1 running Vigor and they were doing just fine. Others have been running Deeper Stratagem for more damage but not as many rolls of the bones. In truth it doesn't really matter as of patch 715 which one you like. Deeper Stratagem does synergize with Mark for Death in a new way and it does synergize with our artifact weapon allowing us that consistent burst but Vigor does increase our energy regen and and with the change to Outlaw Rogue damage output, more Saber Slashes does mean more damage. So with this one, it really is difficult to decide which one is going to be the meta. I think I'm going to stick with Deeper Stratagem for now because it does increase how long our stuns are, but I'm not quite sure 100%. So please do make sure to keep up with the channel and I'll update you guys on the current build. I am thinking and guessing that Deeper Stratagem is going to be the better one, but honestly as a player, your favorite juice would ever. In the next trait we have Iron Stomach, Elusiveness and Cheat Death. Cheat Death was pretty cool but they made it a 6 minute cooldown so I doubt I'll be playing that except maybe in some 2v2 double DPS arenas but Elusiveness is going to be the best choice in this trait. And the next trait is Parlay, Pray in the Week and Dirty Tricks. If only they were to add between the eyes into Pray in the Week. Sadly I cannot take Pray in the Week, Parlay is basically still garbage but Dirty Tricks is still really really good and useful so you can get those cheap shots, saps, blinds and gouges at no energy cost. At the next three, Cannibal Barrage, Alacrity and Killing Spree all have been buffed. Funny enough, Cannibal Barrage damage has been increased, but it's not that high in PvP, so that's out of the way altogether. Killing Spree damage did get increased and can be used in PvP, but I honestly alac think Alacrity is the best option for us. Alacrity build up has been changed to 10 stacks, but every stack is due 2% haste, so instead of having to get 20 stacks of haste, now you only need 10 stacks of haste for the same amount of haste, so 10 stacks, 20 haste, really really quick to build up. I feel like a lacquer is just going to be the best one because the 20% haste in PvP is kind of nice. At level 100, it is really a choice between Mark for Death and Slice and Dice. Death Roam above AoE damage has been increased, but I doubt it will be useful in PvP. So with Mark for Death or Slice and Dice, you have two options. With Mark for Death, you are picking Roll the Bones build, where you're able to benefit from all different buffs of Roll the Bones, kind of like the Shark buff, the Cooldown Reduction buff, and many other buffs that are available. 
but Slice and Dice, they did make a change to the ability. Slice and Dice buff is now 100% attack speed and 15% energy regen. So it's really a question for you as a player to decide which one is better. Currently, it is really difficult to find out and we'll just have to see and wait whether Slice and Dice or Roll the Bones will be better. My opinion is that Roll the Bones is probably going to be better because the Shark buff and Cold Reduction are still going to be integral parts of an Outlaw Rogue in PvP arenas. Unless Slice and Dice simply just gives us enough damage and with that slight energy regen, where we'll be finally dealing a ton more damage. In the past patch, without the energy regen, Slice Nice was basically useless, and the damage of the ability didn't change, so I think I'm probably not going to pick Slice Nice for a DPS increase. So I'm probably going to go with Mark for Death, but still do stay updated with my guides and videos and the latter to see what rogues are playing, what builds, and of course I'll make you guys as many builds as possible if there are any new ones to update. But this is everything for the rogue talents, so let's go into Honor Talents from here. Alrighty, let's talk about Honor Talents. I think in the first tree we'll take Gladiator's Medallion, unless you're an orc that can run Relentless or, or you are an alliance where you're free to take Adaptation of Gladiator's Medallion. But for the most part, most players should be taking Gladiator's Medallion. In the next tree, Hardness, Reinforced Armor or Sparring. Reinforced Armor is the best option unless you are bothered by melee or going against melee in arenas, where Sparring is actually just a better option. Maneuverability versus Cut to the Chase is where your next trade choice is, and Maneuverability is the best if you hate slows, but Cut to the Chase can be used with other classes that do apply movement speed increases to get out of sticky situations, so as a rogue you'll be able to stay with them. That does not count blinks, but just movement speed increases. In the next tree, Thick as Thieves is such a good talent, but if you are for whatever reason doing solo PvP, I think Honor Among Thieves is the best, because Turn the Tables is a little bit too situational in order to apply it, but Thick as Thieves should definitely be grabbed in most occasions. In the next tree, Controller's King is still the king as 3 seconds of Adrenal Rush on any CC, be it stuns, silences or polymorphs is super nice for an Outlaw Rogue to have in terms of energy regen and straight up damage output. In the last tree, we have Cheap Tricks, Dismantle and Plunder Armor. If you're going against melee and if melee are really strong and powerful and bother you, then Dismantle is the best way to go, otherwise Plunder Armor offers you that peel mechanic, health reduction for the enemy, health increase for you and 20% damage increase and should definitely be combined into to most of your burst rotations. Now I want to talk a little bit about the very basic playstyle of an Outlaw Rogue that will help you guys perform better in terms of PvP. First of all, as an Outlaw Rogue, people ask me what is my rotation, and there is no such thing as rotation in PvP, but you should be able to separate all abilities and apply them depending on the situation. So for example, use Saber Slash at melee range to generate combo points, use Pistol Shot procs for more combo points, and use Pistol Shot on its own when at range, only best to use it when not at low energy and when you really really need some combo points. Get anywhere between 4-6 to six combo points for roll the bones, then roll until you get a good buff. A good Outlaw can technically use any buff to their advantage since they offer you different utilities for different situations. But here's a cheat sheet, you can feel free to roll until you get a shark buff, true bearing, or a combination with one of those buffs or both of them in the combo. Crit and cooldown reduction are super nice to have when you're dealing DPS and bursting on an enemy. Once you get a good buff, line up all your buffs with a general rush, artifact weapon, plunder armor, tricks of trade and a stun or whatever is available and just try to burst into your enemy as much as possible. Do remember that when you have cooldown reduction, you can get your cooldowns back quicker. That means you can get a couple between the eyes back to back to back onto your opponent, so you definitely should play around with your buffs and get to know them and how they function in terms of PvP. And once you are out of your lineup and don't really have any abilities to burst and throw into your enemy, just wait until you have good buffs with cooldowns and then line up again. So Outlaw Rogue has two different phases. You have your downtime where you're trying to do a setup, and then you have your uptime where you're bursting into the enemy. During the uptime as an Outlaw Rogue, it doesn't really matter that much whether you have all your cooldowns available or none at all, or only a few. As long as an Outlaw Rogue you get a decent buff, let's say it'd be a shark buff for crit, you can line up on an enemy with a stun at full energy of course, pop tricks or trade on a friendly target and deal just as much damage into the enemy as you can while they are stunned. It will force pressure and in some cases will force trinkets and cooldowns out of enemies. Once enemies are drained of all cooldowns, this is where you can come in for the kill as an Outlaw Rogue. So get used to the uptime downtime of an Outlaw Rogue when playing, have some patience and be sure to watch out for your energy, combo points and all that jazz in order to be able to perform well. Outlaw Rogue in no way is an easy spec, it does take some time to get used to, so as you play an Outlaw Rogue, please do keep in mind that this spec, sometimes you're not going to be doing well at it and that's okay, because you just have to watch some videos and try your hardest, take some time, practice the spec and in no time you will eventually figure everything out and I'm pretty sure of it. 
Now for some super useful macros that I think every Outlaw Rogue should have. This is the bare minimum of macros you should have and of course you guys can expand into more detailed macros if you wish but this is the bare minimum. You should at least be using focuses in terms of PvP to focus one target while targeting another. So for example you should have a focus gouge, focus blind and focus between the eyes because that helps you out a ton not only just for CC but when swapping to an enemy. Imagine yourself trained down a rogue, arrested druid opens up, doesn't have bark skin, you grapple hook away to him between the eyes without even targeting the guy, then burst into him, and in most cases the druid will never see it coming. So having set focus targets allows you more control, be able to monitor two different targets, and be more efficient at swapping. Sap macro for stealthies is also very useful, so I will provide it in the video here, and hopefully this will help you catch some druids and rogues before they catch you. Also, a cursor macro for grappling hook is awesome. What it basically does is, the grappling hook ability, you have to first hit a key binding to select it. You get the green reticle saying where you want the grappling hook to go, and then you have to left click to tell the game where you want the grappling hook to go. To take away the left click out of the game altogether, you use a cursor macro where you just point Click the key on your keyboard and then you shoot yourself over to where the cursor is at. So it eliminates the step and makes the PvP combat a little bit faster, allows you for a little bit faster reaction time and overall I found to be a very useful macro in general. Anyway guys, this has been it for me, your friendly neighborhood rogue Dalaran. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on Alpha Rogues and let me know how you guys feel about the changes that has happened to rogues so far. I'm currently going to be testing them, I'm currently going to be playing them and I do understand that this guide might not be perfect, but it is a pretty great starter for many of us in order to get us playing, get us working and get us on, out in the BGs, out in the arenas, out in the world, PvPing uh, against everybody. And of course, if there will be any more and newer changes happening to rogues in the future, of course I'll make a video updating you guys on all the different changes that are happening with rogues, all the different playstyles and whatnot. And be sure to subscribe to the channel in order to see me play Outlaw Rogue. So just from watching me, a lot of people have stated that watching a player play a spec that they are interested in is usually the best way of going about in terms of learning. Because you're able to see the player in a natural environment with different situations, playing against different classes and specs and seeing how they react to all those changes allows most players to learn how to truly excel at the spec. So thank you guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, be sure to give this video a like if you liked, and I'll see you guys in the next video.